Hey everyone, welcome to Guys Gone Tankless. My name is Brian. And I'm Mark. Uh, we're part of the staff here at EcoTemp and we are here to help you troubleshoot your EL5 water heater on why it may not be igniting. Uh, we'll break it up into are you having a uh, clicking noise? If you're not hearing a clicking noise and if it isn't igniting, then uh, why is it not staying on? So one of the first things we did to help save some time was remove some of the screws that you will have to be doing to be able to get the face off the heater. So there are two here at the bottom. Um, and then six on the top here, there's a couple on the rain cap on the inside assembly here. You have to take those off as well. So you will also have to take off these knobs here and then be able to take off the face. So for issues where you hear clicking and it may not be igniting, um, here are some of the things that you can check to be able to help troubleshoot that. Um, one of them is the um, flame sensor. And the fun fact is that this is marked with blue tape, so it's easy to find here. Um, you also make sure you check the ignition pin here as well too. Make sure all the connections are tight, nothing is loose. Um, another one of the things you also want to check is uh, gas compression. Um, a lot of the things here, especially in ship shipping to um, to a location or to your house, is that there are many things that be obstructing here. So make sure there's nothing in the way there. And lastly, we also want to check the uh, water line as well too. So it, here we can see that it comes with the assemblies here for. Um, male and female ends for the any kind of hoses that you can connect. Make sure you check the screen here as well too, that no debris is inside and you should be able to have um, free, free water flowing through. And then we'll also look into um, making sure that the wire receptacle is actually plugged in all the way. If it's loose or if it's not in, make sure you take it out and push it back in to double check that it's tight. Um, the micro switch, which is located right here, is another thing you'll want to look at. Um, here's a copy of the micro switch you'll notice that there's a little lever in the micro switch and you can push on it. And every time you push on it, you'll hear a clicking sound. If that clicking sound is happening, then the part is good. The other thing you'll want to look at is the solenoid, the gas solenoid right here. Um, and two ways to make sure that it's working is just tap on it to clear out anything that might be stuck in it. Uh, and the other thing you can look at if you are able to take it out, which are these two screws right here. Uh, once you do that, you'll be able to look at the plunger pushing down on the plunger, making sure that the spring is actually pushing it back up. If that happens, then the part is good. Um, and then the last part is obviously the tilt switch. Um, this appliance does have a safety feature, which is our tilt switch. If it tilts more than 45 degrees, it will turn off on its own. It's a safety feature that we have. Um, just in case it falls on the ground, then, then obviously nothing bad will happen. Uh, but those are some of the things that you'll want to look on the internals to make sure they're working. Right, and if you've gone through some of the troubleshooting on the things we just talked about and um, the problem still isn't solved or the issue isn't solved, then what we want to do is check a few other things, um, whether it's clicking, not clicking, um, the igniter stays on. Um, here are some things to know. So to make sure that the uh, water heater is properly activated, it needs a minimum of 25 PSI. Um, that's usually standard if you have city water connect, uh, but if you're out somewhere in the woods, uh, you don't have access to city water or anything like that, uh, we do have a 12 volt pump that should supply enough pressure to be able to keep the water heater activated and flowing at all times. Um, you do need to connect it to a car battery um, and make sure that the car battery is good as well. Um, another thing that we want to do is make sure we check everything as far as the propane is concerned, um, make sure that the regulator hose, there's nothing wrong with it and cracks or anything like that. If you need to bleed it, uh, Mark's here is just going to uh, loosely kind of just um, untighten it so that we hear some hissing um, and then you, tighten it back up. If you hear the hissing, there's enough air that's come out and then tight it all the way back up to make sure it's tight. And um, lastly, you'll also check the battery casing. So the batteries casings right here, if you'll open it, you'll want to put in four new batteries um, and close it, tighten it, and you're good to go. Wait, wait, we also did forget one thing. So there is an on and off oh, switch. Yes. <laughs> Very easy to forget. Uh, make sure that's flipped on. <laughs> and hopefully um, your water heater is working as it should. So um, I hope this helps. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that notification button for any future content that we have. So thanks for watching, guys.